Here is the chloroplast located in the cells of the plant. Inside the chloroplast, you've got the thylakoid membranes and the solution outside, which is the stroma. Okay. Uh, during the process of the light-dependent reactions, we're going to start with energy from the sun. As the sun hits the leaf, it's going to hit molecules of chlorophyll that are located on the thylakoid membranes. Inside that chlorophyll are electrons. As the sun hits the chlorophyll, the energy from sunlight is absorbed by these electrons, and they become high-energy electrons. Now, the cell needs to capture that energy uh, as best it can, and it does it in two different ways. And they go by technical names, like photosystem one and photosystem two. We're just going to focus on what happens. So the first way that the cell captures that energy from these excited electrons is that it puts the electrons through a process that I'm going to show with this little staircase. It's called the electron transport chain, or the ETC. And you don't need to know the details of how the ETC works. You can if you want, but you're not required to. But what happens is that the electrons are moved through these membranes, through the electron transport chain, and the energy from them is used to charge ADP and phosphate to put that third phosphate molecule on and to convert it into a molecule of ATP. Okay, so we've captured energy from the sun in molecules of ATP. Now the electrons are again at a lower energy state. They're going to be charged up again by energy from the sun. Only this time, those high energy electrons are going to be picked up by a different carrier, NADP+. It's going to pick up the high energy electrons and some hydrogen ions and be charged up into NADPH. So now we have energy that was originally from the sunlight captured in two energy carriers, ATP and NADPH. Now the plant is doing this continuously, and it does require some raw materials besides the carriers. I need to have a constant source of electrons because these electrons are going to go away into the next part of the process. And I need a source of hydrogen for my carrier, NADP+, so that it can be converted and charged up into NADPH. So the way that the cells get hydrogen and electrons is from water. So water molecules within the thylakoid membranes are broken down by enzymes. The hydrogen atoms are separated off. So if you think about water, water is H2O. You can separate that into hydrogen and oxygen. But the hydrogen atoms themselves can also be separated out into a hydrogen ion and an electron. Because remember, a hydrogen atom is simply a proton with an electron around it. A proton is the same as a hydrogen ion. So what happens is that these water molecules are split apart, releasing those two atoms. The hydrogen atoms are split into a hydrogen ion and an electron. The hydrogen ions and the electrons are then available in the thylakoid membranes to be used in the process of the light dependent reactions. When you do this with multiple water molecules, you free up oxygen atoms. They combine to form O2 or oxygen gas. This diffuses out of the chloroplast, out of the cell, out through the stomata of the plant. Okay, that's why plants produce oxygen when they do photosynthesis. Now this process of using enzymes to break down water molecules has its own name that you will need to know. And that's called photolysis. Lysis always means to break. Photo means in the presence of light as part of the light dependent reactions. Okay, so keep track of where we are. We've done the light dependent reactions. We've used energy from sunlight to charge our carriers NADPH and ATP. To get a supply of hydrogen and electrons, we broke up water molecules in the process of photolysis. That's actually the harder part of the two. The next part is the Calvin cycle. So in the Calvin cycle, we're just going to take our high energy, our um, charged carriers. We're going to let them diffuse out into the stroma. In the stroma has been diffusing 
molecules of carbon dioxide in through the stomata of the leaf, into the cells, into the chloroplasts. And in the Calvin cycle, a bunch of chemical reactions are going to use energy from these two carriers to combine the carbon from carbon dioxide and convert it into glucose. Now again, this takes a lot of energy to build carbon dioxide into glucose. So where does the energy come from? Well, it's going to come off of our carriers. So NADPH will re release its electrons and its energy, and it will go back to being NADP+. The ATP molecule, the third phosphate, will be broken off. The energy will go into the Calvin cycle, and ADP and phosphate are now uncharged. All this energy and carbon and hydrogen will go through the Calvin cycle and be converted into high energy glucose molecules. The now uncharged carriers, NADP plus and ADP plus phosphate, are available to be used again. They're recyclable. They can go back into the thiocoid membranes and be used again in the light-dependent reactions. 